Hey all and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'll show you how to build the only static grass applicator you'll ever need. It's strong, durable and easy to use. With one of these applicators, you'll be able to easily create absolutely stunning scenery. Before committing to a particular design, I first make sure the electronic circuitry works. Once I'm satisfied that everything will work as planned, I begin to design the applicator. The electrical components and specific wiring will be discussed shortly. The plans are also available on my website, there's a link in the description. These are the main components that make up the structure of the applicator. A cheap strainer, just make sure the holes are wide enough to fit the grass fibres through. A container, preferably with a clip-on lid a screw type pipe connector, a lid for the pipe, some screws and a nut and bolt, a small piece of pine, and a 40mm pipe that will be the handle. We'll start with the lid. Simply remove the inner portion of the lid. A Dremel will make this job fast and easy. The inner section of the lid will be used later, so we'll just place this to one side. The Dremel will sometimes leave a rough edge, so I lightly sand the edges, although this is not always necessary. The strainer will be glued to the inside of the lid, and the smooth plastic does not provide the best surface to apply glue. This is easily fixed by giving the inside of the lid a rough sanding. To use the strainer mesh, we'll first need to remove it from the handle. An old pair of scissors should be enough to cut the mesh. Once it's free, gently flatten it out. Using the lid as a guide, I trace the inner area around the lid onto the mesh. When cutting out the tracing, be sure to leave an overhang of about 5mm or so, as this will be the portion of mesh that gets glued down. Before gluing, I wipe the area to ensure it's clean. The inside of this particular lid has a small overhang. With a flat tool, I lightly press the edges of the mesh down. To ensure the mesh is pressed down evenly while the glue is applied, I use some small bolts and place them on the centre of the mesh. Now that it's pressed down evenly, I apply the glue. I'm using a two-part epoxy glue because it's very strong and reliable. This particular type is a 5 minute epoxy, so it doesn't take long to harden. The connection between the handle and the container that holds the static grass is made using the two pipe connectors. The only modification I'll make is to remove the excess from this piece. PVC pipe is quite easy to cut, so a small hacksaw is all that's needed to get the job done. Next we need to cut a hole in the main part of the container, just like we did with the lid. Once I've traced the hole, I use the Dremel to carefully cut out the hole. I deliberately cut the hole slightly small because I want it to be a tight fit. With a small amount of sanding, it's a perfect fit. Now we use the piece of lid we saved earlier. This piece will prevent the grass fibres from getting into the handle of the grass applicator. The plastic is quite soft so scissors manage to cut the lid quite easily. It then gets sanded to ensure it fits properly and glued using the two part epoxy we used earlier. The main guts of the static grass applicator is the negative ion generator from Odely Electronics. If you're going to build one of these applicators, I highly recommend using this negative ion generator because it has a very high output voltage and has been specifically designed for use with static grass applicators. The applicator I'm building is very compact and space is scarce, 
so I'll need to remove the two small mounting tabs from each side of the generator. To gauge the length of pipe I'll need for the handle, I lay the components out in the positions they will be once inside the tube. Now it's just a matter of marking the pipe and cutting it to length. You can cut the pipe longer if desired, however having a short handle allows the applicator to be used in confined spaces. Now that everything has been cut and glued, I'll give it a test fit to make sure it all fits together before installing the electronic components. A small piece of pine is measured and cut to help hold the battery in place. The piece of pine on its own is too big to fit, so I'll need to shave a small amount from the edges on the two corners. A hobby knife should be able to get the job done, and a light sanding will neaten it up. It should be a snug fit because we don't want the battery rattling around too much inside the handle. When drilling the hole for the bolt, the bottom of the bolt should just touch the line we drew signifying the top of the battery. The nut and bolt allow for easy installation and removal of the battery from the handle. It doesn't have to be perfect, however you don't want the bolt to sit too low as it might make it impossible to screw the bolt in with the battery in place. The nut gets inserted and glued into a small groove that we'll create in the wood. Pine is also quite soft, so a hobby knife should be fine when cutting out the groove to fit the nut inside. Two-part epoxy is used again to secure the nut in place and left to dry. The on off on rocker switch is a press type fit. Just measure the size of the switch base and in the centre of the lid mark out its position and carefully cut the hole using the Dremel. You may need to lightly shave the edges and corners with a hobby knife in order to get a nice snug fit. On each side of the switch I drill 3mm holes for the LEDs. And lastly, I drill out the hole for the 12 volt power supply. To drill the hole for the battery holder, I first need to precisely measure from the top of the wood to the top of the PVC handle while it's in position inside the handle. So in this case the top of the wood is 2.95 cm down from the top of the handle which is then marked. Next I measure from the top of the wood to the centre of the hole, which is 7mm, and then mark that on the PVC as well. This is where we need to drill our hole for the bolt to fit through. Another hole is then drilled through the base for the high voltage output line from the generator. This will eventually get soldered onto the wire mesh. An extra wire is spliced onto the negative wire that runs into the generator. This is the wire that is pressed into the glue when using the static grass applicator. It needs to be about 50 centimeters long. Heat shrink is used to avoid the exposed wires shorting as it will be very close to the battery. This long wire is threaded through the handle of the applicator near the base and you'll want the hole to be in line with the hole we drilled for the battery. Once the ion generator is in and pressed flat against the base, I install the battery holder and screw the bolt tightly in place. Now I drill a very small hole and screw in a small screw that will hold the battery holder in place even when the bolt that holds the battery is not installed. You can see how easy it is to install and remove the battery. Now 
now for the most complicated part, wiring. Basically, as best you can, just follow the diagram as it is drawn here. Do your best to keep it as compact as you can, as there isn't much room in the lid, and we're trying to keep the overall size to a minimum. Here is a list of components I used. For more information, you can check out my website. I'll put a link in the description. Before sealing off the lid, I give it a quick test to ensure everything works properly. To seal and protect the components, I fashion up a few small pieces of 3mm MDF wood. You just need to make sure they don't impose on the handle, as the lid needs to slide over the top of the handle. Roughly mark where the wires need to come out from the lid, and where the battery wires will also come through the lid and drill out the holes. The battery wires get soldered on after threading them through the 3mm MDF because of the large battery connector on one end. With our favourite glue again, I glue the small pieces of MDF on each side in place and then press the top piece in place. I also apply a small amount of glue around the wires for added strength and durability. We're almost finished. The high voltage output line is soldered onto the wire mesh. You may need to solder from both sides depending on the mesh. The wire mesh I used tended to repel the solder a little. Now with it soldered in place, I apply some more two-part epoxy to secure it to the lid of the container. Now we can connect the remaining two wires to the negative ion generator. And the last job we have to do to complete this static grass applicator is to install the alligator clip to the end of the negative charge wire. When it comes to installing the battery, we want to avoid any rattling and sometimes that means using something like a piece of Woodland Scenics paving tape or some door or window sealing tape. A small piece on the bottom of the battery is often all that's needed. Now just connect the battery and carefully slide it down into the handle. Tighten the screw so the battery is held in position and press the lid onto the handle. One more thing you'll need to do, use a permanent marker to write on the lid so you'll know which LED indicates which power source is being used. This is about 15,000 volts arcing across the alligator clip. Not something I want to touch with my fingers. So be sure to avoid touching the wire mesh with your bare hands while the applicator is on. Now you have a static grass applicator that can be connected to the mains power for reliability or you can power it from a 9 volt battery enabling you to reach those difficult spots without dragging wires all over your scenery. If you're a model railroad enthusiast be sure to go and visit Ken Patterson's YouTube channel. He's doing a weekly podcast with all the latest news as well as tips and tricks for model railroading. It's well worth checking out and staying up to date with what's happening in the modeling community. Cheers and thanks for watching.